Hey guys, this is Colby. Uh, today I'm going to show you how to make these shoulder pads for the clone trooper that we were working last time. So let's get started. Starting off, go to front view, press 1 on your numpad, or you can click this yellow button here, the Y button, and pretty much set up your image references. I've already shown how to do this in the first video of the series, the chest armor. So go back and watch that if you don't know how to do this. But basically, we're just going to be moving this front piece to the shoulder pad. Go to side view and do the same. You're just going to be focusing on this section of the reference, so the side view. So let's press shift and right click on the reference on front view. And select the point where you want to spawn a new mesh. So I'm going to spawn it right about here. Press shift A, mesh. Let's create a plane. Scale down a tad bits to match the width of the shoulder pad. Let's move it into position here. Let's go to side view, match to your reference. It's kind of hard to see. But you can see it right there. That's at the top. Go to front view and do the same. Just match it to the reference. So pretty much the same as always, just go into edit mode on the plane. Let's cut it in half. Control R down the middle, left click twice, split one of the faces, press X, go back into object mode, add a mirror modifier, and turn on clipping right here. And so we're going to mirror on the y-axis because that's the direction that's pointing. So there we go. Now that we have it on one side, it'll do it on the other side as well and save us some time. You can go back to object mode and reposition uh, the mesh if you need to, right to about the center. So now we're just going to start editing the positions of things and extruding new faces to match the overall curve of the actual shoulder pad. So go into edit mode on your mesh. You can move this bottom uh, face down right towards here. Go back to object mode, you can reposition the whole plane. Move this down right about here. And go into side view, or front view I mean, and kind of match to your reference. So it should all this should be like right about here. Uh, if it's not perfect, that's fine. So as long as it gets a nice curve. So we're going to select these top two vertices here. Press E to extrude and pretty much move it right about to the uh, this side of the shoulder pad. So the farthest left side. Go to side view and match to your reference. Can scale it down, tweak the positions of certain vertices, match the roundness. It's fine that it's low poly. We'll make it high poly later, but right now we're just gonna keep things low poly so that way it's easier to work with. So I'm gonna keep tweaking the positions of things, but pretty much I've already shown what you need to know to get started. I uh, pretty much from here, I'm just extruding faces and you're tweaking positions of vertices to match the overall shape of the shore pad. So here I might add some roundness to the sides. And go to side view and do the same. Move these down a bit. Kind of cover the whole shoulder pad. Just like that. Looks pretty good. It's pretty low poly and pointy. That's fine. Uh, so here you can see that the references don't match up perfectly. That's fine. Just do your best to match them. Find a balance between the two. It doesn't have to be perfect. Just as long as it makes sense for the shoulder pad. It's supposed to be curved. That's now what I'm going to do is add an edge loop right down here on the side. Press Control R, left click, move it up a bit, so that way we can have a nice bit of roundness for the whole thing. Just trying to make the edges round as well as this section here towards the middle be as round as well. You can go out of side in front view and just kind of tweak the position of things to make sure that they make sense. Looks pretty good. So now we can add a subdivision modifier to the whole object. So go back into object mode, add a subdivision modifier. So it's pretty curved. So you can turn up the poly counts as much as you want. So we need to adjust the shape of the whole piece a little bit. Go back into edit mode and just kind of move some things up. And basically, you're just matching it to the reference. So you can go to wireframe mode here, press Z on your keyboard, hold it down and press wireframe. Or you can click up here, same deal. And go back to solid and just kind of alternate between the two. You can grab vertices in wireframe mode and move them down to where you need them to be. Let's move these all down a bit. And create a nice overall shape that matches the reference. So 
But once you're done with the overall shape of the piece and happy with the overall shape, as long as it makes sense to you on your own side, uh, you can go and start adding thickness. First, you can obviously, you can go back to object mode, add right click and shade smooth to add some smoothness to the surface here. I uh, can go back to edit mode. So there's two ways you can add thickness to any piece. I'd say that one is a bit easier or is the other sometimes better. Uh, you can add a solidify modifier and change up the thickness right here. Then you'll basically have to go back into edit mode and kind of sharpen up the edges. This control R, left click. But you have these like sharp corners, so I don't recommend doing this all the time. Sometimes it works. In this case, I'd recommend something a bit different, something I usually do for most of my pieces. It's just a bit more consistent. So instead of adding solidify modifier, you can go into edit mode on the object. Select everything, press A on your keyboard, press E to extrude, and S to scale it down inward. We'll remove it down a tad bit after we've scaled it, and just match the overall thickness, make it even. Now if you go and add edge loops on these corners here, or these edges, Control R, left click, scroll it up a bit. Control R, left click, and move one down. You get a much nicer curve and thickness. I think it looks a lot better, in my opinion. That's just me. So now we're basically done with the whole video. Uh, pretty much this last step is a bit optional, but if you want to actually move this over to a base mesh, uh, you can basically just duplicate it, move it down. Kind of like I covered in my previous videos. Uh, basically, you can just match it to your mesh, whatever character that you're using. And pretty much just match the overall uh, shoulder pad. And once you have it in place, you can add a mirror modifier to it and set the target as the base mesh itself. So in this case, you can see here, it's the mirror object as the base mesh, and it will symmetrize across perfectly. And later on, we'll apply all of our modifiers, but now we're just going to keep them on. So that way we can still edit these objects without having to finalize everything first. Anyway, guys, that's the end of this video. Uh, if you have any questions, just leave a comment down below. Uh, next time we'll be covering how to make the upper bicep armor here. It's pretty easy, I'd say. It's a little bit more challenging, but still pretty simple. Uh, but anyways, I hope you guys found this video useful, and see you guys next time.